Throughout my career, I've had people encouraging me along the way, helping me to get things done. Whether it's from my parents, whether it's from different coaches, teachers at school, I think it was very beneficial that I had two older brothers. I always wanted to be as good as they were. Oh, what a finish! My father always treated me like a professional footballer. Even when he would talk to me, he said, I'm going to cut your steak tonight because you need to be strong for when you're a professional footballer. Those little subliminal messages, hence I thought I was a footballer probably before my time. My dad said right from the start that I was always going to be a centre forward. He said I just basically loitered around the goal. What a pass! Michael Owen wins it! I think if I had to name one player that's assisted me throughout my career, most of all, it would have to be Steven Gerrard. Gerrard, here's Michael Owen. From the age of 11, we were in the same Liverpool team together. Invariably, he would be the one doing the assists and I'd be the one finishing it off. Gerrard, that's a brilliant ball! That's dazzling! ABSA, the official African banking partner of the Premier League, is giving you the assist so you can get things done. Hello and welcome to Radul Live. Yes, it's another Saturday, which means another opportunity to discuss Kenyan sport and put ourselves on our own map. But before we do that, for 30 seconds, yes, I will discuss the English Premier League and the fact that there are several matches happening today. Some have been postponed for various reasons, but there is a match between Brighton and Newcastle at 11 p.m. tonight. Arsenal playing uh, against West Ham, London Derby tomorrow. And yes, we're expecting to see some great assists in these games. And we know that great assists often lead to great goals. And that is what my partners, Absa, are trying to tell you guys. It's 2021. You want to get your, 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 your life back in order after having a difficult 2020. And Absa is saying we can give you uh, loans in which you can pay back in six in up to seven years actually what you need to do is open an absa one account so text the word one to triple two six eight one to triple two six eight open an absa one account and get access to low interest loans that you can pay back in up to seven years yes that's absa that's africanacity now joining me today guys is a man who's here wearing two hats you all know him as the uh, president of uh, kenya volleyball federation um, of which has been president for 23 years and he's going to tell us what he's done in those two decades plus and he's also wearing a hat as the uh, chef de mission for the we, we're still calling it tokyo 2020 sure. because the olympics were due to be held last year but they're going to be held this year so we're going to talk about volleyball and then we'll get into the olympic preparation um into the olympic discussion in the second half of the show why daka kioni karibu thank you Kara, for having me i've not seen you in about a year and a half well, um, I, I see you in social media, but <laughs> physically, I'm happy to see you. But we talk often. We see talk you. often because yeah. we have a common agenda to see sport, and in your case, volleyball, uh, mm -hmm. develop even further in this country. Mm -hmm. And uh, first of all, thank you for honoring this invitation, which I've been making for weeks. <laughs> but you're a busy man. Thank you, Carol. Time is always been what? Yeah. Now, before we get into how uh, Malkia strikers are preparing for the Olympics, I want us to talk about your 23 years in office. When you came, when you took up, first of all, did you think you'd be uh, at the helm of uh, the Volleyball Federation for this long? And what would you say have, has been your highs and your lows over the years? Uh, thank you, Carol. I believe it's probably more than 23 years. I've been involved in volleyball at different levels. Before joining the national executive, I was uh, chairman of Nairobi branch for a couple of years. I enjoyed, I enjoyed the national executive many years back. And at one point, I disagreed with the rest of the members of the executive, so I resigned. But uh, the volleyball fraternity told me, you are not done yet. We want you back. So they re-elected re me, and I've been the president of the federation, I think, for the last uh, 15 maybe 20 years uh, consistently. And uh, I'm happy and I can say that uh, what we have delivered for Volleyball Kenya is evident for everybody. We have had some disappointments. We still face some challenges. But I believe that we have been able to lift uh, volleyball to a fairly good level in this country. 
Now, you're speaking, when we think of volleyball, when we think of volleyball, we just think of Malkia strikers. People know Malkia strikers. They have very little knowledge of the clubs, that we have a very active league, um, and we have almost zero knowledge of men's volleyball. So, I mean, first I want to talk about your success with the Malkia strikers. Was this, did, did you bump into the success or it was very strategic? And if it was strategic, why have we not managed to do the same for the men? Uh, I'll explain if you allow, uh, Caro. Uh, you know, clubs are basically successful because they're supported by leader sponsors. Mm -hmm. And uh, volleyball in this country, uh, particularly for women, even for men, is known more at the club level because the sponsors of these clubs are able to invest in the preparation uh, of their teams. Within the uh, ladies' side, we have had uh, powerful clubs uh, such as the Kenya Commercial Bank, Kenya Pipeline, Kenya Prisons. Uh, nowadays, we have got DCI, Directorate of Criminal Investigation. They have a team. They have a team belonging to Equity Bank. On the men's side, again, uh, team from prisons, teams from the General Service Unit, teams from Kenya Ports Authority have been dominant over the years. But the difference between the growth and development of women and men volleyball is uh, as a result of many factors. One, and it is uh, unfortunate that in black Africa, we generally play volleyball outside, mm -hmm. on grass courts, open air. Or volleyball is basically an indoor sport. It's only in Black Africa you find teams playing volleyball in open courts. Professional volleyball yes. in open courts. Yes. yes, in Black Africa. If you go to North Africa, they will play indoor. So uh, fortunately, our women team are fairly strong naturally. And although women in Northern Africa, the Arab countries, play uh, indoor volleyball, when we train just for a month in an indoor facility in this country, mm. we are able to beat uh, any country in Africa. Any country in Africa. The men's story is fairly different. The teams from Arab Africa, the teams from Western Africa, particularly Cameroon, Nigeria, are fairly strong and they get, uh, I believe, a lot of support from their governments. So when we meet with them, uh, we do not create a very big impact in the men category. But our men's team are good, and uh, we have recorded victories at the br bronze level. During the African Games, uh, we have taken, I think, bronze two or three occasions. So the potential is there within our men's team, but uh, they need to be supported fully. And my belief, and I think it is a way of grounded belief, is that national teams, not just in volleyball, all national teams should be the responsibility of the government. Club teams are supported by their sponsors, the clubs. National teams are national teams, they are Kenyan teams. They should be supported by the government in terms of funding, in terms of having access to training facilities. This unfortunately has not been the case over very, very many years. And uh, I think, uh, although we are seeing quite a bit of change under the current uh, leadership of the Minister of Sports and uh, uh, Cabinet Secretary Amina Mohammed and uh, the PS Joe Okudo, they are showing uh, more sympathy in terms of uh, empowering national teams. But previously, uh, our efforts to get either both men or women team to train, national teams mm. to train at the only indoor arena you have in Kenya in Kasarani has been a challenge <laughs> because uh, yes. som sometimes uh, you are training and uh, there is a political meeting and the political meeting is given uh, preference over you because they are paying money mm -hmm. or you are training for an important event and then you are told uh, a certain bank has booked the main arena because they have a function and you have to Give way. That's, eh? that's, that's, uh, that's <laughs> very depressing because uh, as far as I know, Kasarani's first and foremost agenda should have been that, that, that for sport. That is true. It is uh, purpose built for sports. Yes. 
but uh, you will find that uh, often you can access it because of other non-sport activities. And this is because last week we hosted uh, your national team coach for Matia Strikers, and people were shocked to find out that national teams are actually charged money That's to use Kasarani. That, that is a fact. That is a fact. And Kasarani is not cheap. Yeah, if you are training there, you have to pay for the use of the uh, floodlights, mm. for the use of the hall. It's normally a minimum of about 25,000 shillings a day. If you're hosting... Yeah, but that's a shame, because even if the government doesn't have... Because the government doesn't have budget for, for enough money for these national teams. Where you're saying you wish they would support all the national teams. But at the very least, the facilities they own, they could say, as part of our contribution as government, don't pay for these... That is, that is happening now, I'm telling you, mm. that's what I'm saying, we are seeing, uh, seeing quite a bit of change under the current uh, CS in sports. Mm. You will now get a letter uh, committing to the s Sports Kenya, the managers of uh, the arena, that the government will pay. But previously, that was not the case. You go and book for the use of that arena, you are given a contract to sign, and you are told, please pay a deposit of so much. It's a national team. National teams do not have sources of revenue. You do not have corporate sponsors. Mm. So as much as you'd want to prepare national teams for international events, it becomes a challenge. And I think that's challenge. why yes. you end up finding that there's a corporate meeting happening, because I'm sure those corporate meetings, and Kasarani is well within their rights to make extra money to Absol manage no, the facilities. But they should still say, this place has been booked for volleyball training, so even if you're bringing me money, sorry, it's been booked. Yes, but... Uh, but I think they the receive the, the first the check they get. Yeah, they are expected to generate money. I think that is part of uh, their mandate. You run those facilities by generating money. Yes. So anybody giving them money will be given priority. Which is wrong, which I think if you've booked it, unless you, you, the, 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 the sport teams have not yet booked it, but if you've booked it, they should tell anyone with money, I'm sorry. Well, our job is to develop sports. Uh, thank you. I think we need to have uh, uh, a mind change in that respect yeah. at yeah. the government level. Uh, because I know, for instance, um, and I'm sure you heard it from uh, Coach Bitok. Uh, if you go to Rwanda, mm -hmm. if you go to Botswana, mm -hmm. if you go to Congo, if you go to Cameroon, sport federations are normally requested to forward their annual budgets to the ministry. Mm -hmm. So these budgets are put together, sent to Treasury. So once the government approves the budget in Parliament, then you get a response that we have approved the following budget for you. So you are able to plan mm -hmm. for your international activities. Mm -hmm. But here, you have to make a request every time you're an international uh, uh, event. Sometimes you're told yes, sometimes you're told no. It becomes difficult to plan. So even if you forward your budget, like now we're coming up to budget in June, and I'm sure the budget is being prepared now. So even if you give a one-year plan, it's still touch and go. You don't know if you're yeah, receiving the funding Federations, federations have been doing that. Mm -hmm. You get requested for your budget, you forward mm -hmm. your budgets. But uh, at no point have we ever received a communication from the ministry indicating that you received your budget for this uh, year, the following has been approved for you. Then you're able to plan. That does not uh, happen. It uh. depends on how I wake up today and decide I'm giving you money for. <laughs> yes. Like this is an Olympic year. I'm sure there's so many, and, and, and we'll discuss Olympics in the second half, but there's so many federations telling the government this is how we want to prepare for the Olympics. Th that, that, that is true, mm. and the government's response has been very encouraging. You know, Olympics is a major event, mm. and all governments want to ensure that uh, they get proper representation and good performance Olympics at the Olympics. Is an, is, an, is, 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 is a major event, but you prepare for the Olympics for four years. You uh, don't prepare for four months. Absolutely. That kind of mindset yeah. is not quite there. It's not there. Yeah. Um, let's come back to, uh, we were talking about club volleyball um, just now. And I realized when you're naming the teams that are there, they're all corporates that employ you. Even the government angle, the prisons, the pipelines. So do we have clubs that are not aligned to companies? Because what happens to someone who's not a soldier, not a prisons officer, not a banker, who wants we to play professional volleyball? We have very many so-called self-supporting clubs. Mm -hmm. And uh, we treat them slightly differently, particularly if they are, uh, it's going to be a league or a national tournament. We give them some concession 
Mm -hmm. Because we know they have challenges. Uh, we try the best we can to ensure that as many teams as possible participate, particularly in our national tournaments and uh, also in, in the National League. But uh, uh, before we leave the issue of the national teams, I want to mention about a very critical factor, which is the development of um, uh, players at younger levels. You know? In Kenya, we have an organization called the Kenya Academy of Sports. It's, it's actually under the Ministry of uh, Sports. Mm -hmm. I am not quite sure I know exactly what they do. But we have in Africa, the global level, age group competitions. Mm -hmm. Girls under 18, boys under 19. Girls under 20, boys under 21. These are events we should be participating in, but we don't participate in them, again, because of lack of resources. So, so they're we they're don't have youth programs in volleyball? We, we don't. The, we benefit a great deal from uh, the Kenya Primary School Sports Association. The Kenya Secondary Schools Sports Association, the Kenya University Sports Association. These are some of our critical stakeholders within the, within the federation. They even have voting rights because we, we want to work with them because they are busy organizing some very nice uh, competitions at those. The school uh, games, basically. Yes, yeah, school games, and when they have their national champions championships, we send out our coaches there to go and scout and go to advise. Sometimes we team up with uh, certain schools. We give them support in terms of maybe attaching professional coaches there to help them develop uh, uh, these, these boys and girls. And when they are good and they are maybe leaving from four or the university, the senior clubs will go and then list them. And scout and enlist, and enlist them. In the actually, we touched on this very briefly with the uh, Coach Bitok last week, yes. but one of the challenges he was saying is that even the quality of coaching in primary and secondary schools, it's Kenya level. That because if you're grooming somebody um, for the national team, you should start grooming them at the age of eight, nine, ten. But if your coaching is not up to par, I, I, I agree with you. But everything we do in this country is Kenyan level. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, including even uh, the coach we have for national teams, mm. it's Kenyan level. And uh, uh, I don't know if it's the right time for me to mention the kind of uh, support we are getting from the International Volleyball Federation. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we prepare our team, we are happy that uh, our Marikia strikers qualified for the Olympics. Yes. And because generally the level of sports in Africa is low, mm -hmm. so Africa is only allowed one slot in the Olympics for women. Mm -hmm. and one slot for men. Yes. And the understanding is that if you allow two or three, four slots, you lower the level of competition at the Olympics. So they only and allow unfortunately, one. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, they only allow one uh, ladies' team and one men's team. And following the recent change of the leadership at the continental level, now we have a new uh, co continental president, a lady called uh, Madam Bushra Hajij from Morocco. Mm -hmm. We've had many discussions with her, and she has petitioned on our behalf the International Volleyball Federation. And the International Volleyball Federation have had a series of Zoom meetings with them, and they say they want to use Kenya as an example of how women volleyball can be lifted in Africa. And for that reason, uh, in the middle of next month, they will send about three or four high performance coaches to Kenya, just to come and study and see for about 10 days, see the status of preparedness of Marikia strikers. From there, they will go to Brazil, mm -hmm. where they will prepare how best to improve the team's performance. Mm -hmm. And the team will be in Brazil for one month with these coaches. Finally, we're getting Malkia strikers <laughs> in camp <laughs> in, a in, a, in a volleyball powerhouse Pre country. <laughs> Precisely. So they will be in Brazil for one month. Then they will come back to Kenya for a week. Mm -hmm. After one week in Kenya, they again, courtesy of the International Volleyball Federation, they will fly to Europe. Mm -hmm. And I think there will be one week in Turkey and one week in Holland, where they will pray, uh, play uh, uh matches with high performing performing teams mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
and under the uh, guidance and coaching of these very high performance uh, coaches. Then from uh, Europe, the team referred directly to Japan, Japan for, the Olympics. for the Olympics, and we are hoping that we can see the results, better results at the Olympics. Yes, because unfortunately we have been participants in the past when it comes to world championships and uh, uh, any competition. Claro, uh, at uh, one point uh, we we shocked the world. I uh, mm -hmm. remind you, in 2015, mm -hmm. we were participating in what uh, the International Volleyball Federation called the World Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. I remember. Uh, oh, you remember? Yes. And uh, in the last leg, which was played in uh, Australia, mm -hmm. We, we beat everybody and we took the trophy, the first global trophy. And as soon as we landed here, you were invited for breakfast uh, by, the deputy <laughs> by the deputy president. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> that is how our national teams are. are, are <laughs> I mean, we're very good in buying <laughs> breakfast <laughs> and tweeting <laughs> congratulations, <laughs> but we're yes. not that great in helping mm -hmm. you to prepare. Abs absolutely, um, absolutely. But it's good well that we're finally seeing you preparing because yes. a few years ago we were uh, trying to shoot videos as does a study to try and appeal mm -hmm. to Kenyans absolutely. to get some money to, to, to prepare the national team. Unfortunately, Kenyans were like, but what's our government doing? We pay taxes. Yeah, I'm Can we use I'm our taxes and prepare uh, this uh, team? I'm saying there is, there, is so there, there is considerable change. Yeah, so there's and progress. There's progress, and I can tell you the budget for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, mm. Olympics is not a small budget, mm -hmm. and uh, it has been submitted to the government, and I'm happy to say that the indications we are getting is that the budget has been approved, mm -hmm. and uh, part of that budget is what will be used the International Volleyball Federation will do the logistics and the preparation, mm -hmm. but the payment of these expenses mm. will be borne by, by, by ourselves or by our government. And the indications I'm getting are uh, positive. The government will be able to do that, which is for me uh, so a, a major breakthrough. So what is our target? What is the uh, Malkia Strikers target at the Olympics? So how far do we expect to go? Uh, as far as we can go, but uh, we have looked at the uh, the pool the team will be playing, mm -hmm. and uh, the team of four, four is a pool of four teams, mm -hmm. and we are targeting to beat two of those teams. If we beat two of those teams, then we shall progress to the next level. Mm -hmm. That is our target. Now it, it's achievable. It's, it's, it's achievable. I, I, I want to take you back a bit when we were discussing the, the, the standard of coaching and we were saying it's all Kenyan standards. But unfortunately, that is, that is the problem because world championships, I think the last one we beat Cameroon. Mm. Um, mm, yes. We beat Cameroon, yes. but we didn't go too far after that. Yes. And we are champions of Africa so often. It's either us, Cameroon, maybe Algeria gives us, uh, right now I think mm -hmm. we're also mm -hmm. all Africa Games mm -hmm. champions. Yes. Um, but we rule in Africa. And then when we go beyond Africa, because as well as it's well and good to prepare Malkia strikers, we're also preparing girls who, according to Bitok last week, in the next three, four years, will no longer be playing for the team. We True. Need new players. True. But they have not got that world-class foundation. True. So what, what are we doing in terms of improving the coaching, even in the schools and the high schools, so that they get the technical skills they need, so that when they join Malkia Strikers, it's not about Africa, it's about the world. Well it's about it winning it more it Grand Prix, not <coughs> just one in a long time. Th that is true, Carol. But mm. you know, uh, we rule Africa. Mm -hmm. And that in itself says that uh, although you are best in Africa, when you go beyond Africa, you are really nothing. So uh, we have to uh, continue appealing both to our continental body and then to International Volleyball Federation to support us with coaches who can uh, elevate or enhance the performance of our own coaches. Because you have to start with our own coaches. Mm -hmm. There is the map. And I'm happy when these uh, three or four coaches who've been in Kenya for 10 days, mm -hmm. they have requested that we put together all our coaches for clubs and national teams so that as they scout on our girls, as they uh, give instructions to our girls, these coaches will be, be, be able to follow and uh, participate. Then thereafter, after the Olympics, the International Volleyball Federation has agreed that they will uh, arrange for a high performance uh, coaching program mm -hmm. for our coaches so that we improve on the coaches, then we improve on the level of the sport. Yes, because the coaches also need to yes. Um, come up to 
world class standards. Yes, absolutely. Do we have what what support does the International Volleyball Federation give on an annual basis? Not just when you're going for Olympics or going for an international or going for qualifiers. Do the they give the any support in terms of development? The International Volleyball Federation does not give uh, financial grants generally, mm -hmm. but uh, they have what they call um, project hub. They have a number of projects which uh, countries can apply for. Mm -hmm. uh, one of these projects, and we have applied for it previously, is where the International Volleyball Federation would identify a good coach, then pay that coach a salary, maybe for three months, mm -hmm. pay for his air travel. Mm -hmm. But when the coach gets here, these other costs have to be met by the federation, like the hotel accommodation, the food and the, the transport. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a coach sent to us about two years ago. Uh, unfortunately, he's only he might be good in coaching, but his temperament and his character was not very good, and <laughs> we, 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 we asked him to, to leave. But uh, we are going. We have already got an approval that uh, we shall be getting a Brazilian coach who will be attached to our national teams, both men and women, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully that will be able to lift uh, the level of our sport. Do they have any programs the other way around, as in taking our coaches and taking them to other countries for for training? No, they have got what you call short-term courses mm -hmm. at the continental level, a course that maybe it takes two to three weeks where the FIVB will provide uh, a, a very high performance coaching instructor or refereeing instructor. And then the, the federation are requested to nominate uh, their ref referees or coaches. You provide for the uh, transportation of your local coaches to, to the venue. Mm -hmm. And uh, within one or two weeks, they'll be trained. And then they, they, they get back to the country. Okay, I want mm -hmm. us to stop there, take mm -hmm. a short break. When we come back, I want to talk about uh, how you finance your operations, mm -hmm. um, what you do about marketing and branding, and then we can talk a bit about the Olympics as a whole, since you are the chef de mission. Thank you. Oh, Everybody, thank for all the athletes you. going to the Olympics. Thank you. So let's take a short break. We'll be back uh, in about 30 seconds. Yes, don't go anywhere. I have scored many great goals in my career. I have also achieved an incredible amount of personal goals. And for both my professional and personal goals, there have been great assists. When I went to Chelsea, the one person that assisted me the most was Jose Mourinho. He brought me to the club. He signed me in training. He was always there talking to me, uh, putting his arms around me, basically letting me know where I am right now, that this is Chelsea, this is where, you know, the big boys play. Everything I did then, all throughout my career, I could hear Mourinho's voice in my head. Well, my relationship with the African players in the team was really good. It was fantastic. I think uh, when I came in, obviously Drogba was there. He looked after me, gave me lots of advice. Drogba really kind of helps me uh, get things done. Being a defensive player for me, my job is to make sure that the team plays really well. Looking back at a game and seeing that every part of your job you did really well and even if you don't assist someone scoring a goal, for me that's an assist. That's the African asset for me. Welcome back. This is Radul Live. Yes, today we're talking volleyball, but we all know that a bit later on we're going to be watching English Premier League matches as well. Actually, today we have to wait until 11 p.m. because the Tottenham game has been postponed. Tomorrow, I know fellow Gunners like myself know we are going to West Ham. We know we're going to get great assists and we know we're going to get great goals. And don't laugh at me if we don't. Um, now, if you want a great to achieve your goals in life, guys, you need to speak to Absa. Absa is willing to give you the assist you need so that you can achieve your goals in 2021. Simply open an ABSA One account. Text the word ONE, uh, O-N-E to triple two six eight one to triple two six eight. Someone will call you back, give you information on how you can open an ABSA One account and see how you can get an assist 
in terms of a loan that you can pay back in seven years so that you can achieve your goals in life. Guys, that's ABSA, that's Africanacity. Now back to volleyball, because if we don't grow our own sport, nobody's going to come and do it for us. Eh? And we're having this conversation with the president of the federation, Waizaka Kioni. And uh, um, Kioni, before the break, you were telling us that uh, you have to accommodate foreign coaches, even if they're sent by the international federation. You have uh, to prepare the different uh, categories of of, 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 of teams, how do you finance your activities? If Because uh, you told me International Federation does not give cash. How do you finance activities? It's a challenge. It's a living challenge mm. because, um, and it's not just in volleyball. It is uh, cut across all it's the- in all sports. All in all the sports, mm. all the federations. Uh, we get a little money when the our clubs in the league pay participation, league participation fees, uh, but that is, that isn't that, that is that isn't much. Until about uh, I think three four years back, we had a partnership with National Oil, mm -hmm. and that partnership was uh, really basically in respect of Marquez Strikers, mm -hmm. and uh, from the proceeds of that partnership, uh, apart from Marquez Strikers, you are able also to do uh, a few other things within the federation. Unfortunately, that particular company, I think, developed serious cash flow problems and uh, they withdrew. Since then, we have been trying really hard to bring some other corporate sponsor on board. We have not been successful. We have a number of uh, marketing uh, consultants on board. We have contracts with them. And they have told them, please go, market, get us a sponsor. Mm -hmm. We are still waiting. We have had uh, previously discussions oh. with uh, Safaricom, not successful. Equity Bank, not successful. So it's a challenge, and uh, you know, I don't, mm. I don't understand what is missing. You know, when I when it comes to other sports, mostly they they, they don't have uh, fans when they play their games or um, they don't perform on the international stage. I don't understand how corporate Kenya is not lining up from here to Mombasa to sponsor Malkia Strikers or to sponsor at least the Women's Volleyball League. Because there's a video you sent me yesterday, unfortunately because of rights issues, I can't uh, air it. But it was a, a, a Kenya Volleyball uh, Malkia Strikers match. It was full. And when you play at Kasarani, it is full. Full. Malkia strikers perform on the international stage and perform well. If I was sitting behind a corporate desk of a bank, an insurance company, a, a telecom company, I would use these young girls that to make money. That is a you know? that is a puzzle to market my product. <laughs> that that is, that is a puzzle. We we simply don't understand. Uh, they are beautiful. Yeah. They are hardworking. They are role models. They perform well. Well, I hope the corporate world is listening to you because I also don't understand uh, why we cannot be able to get corporate sponsors for this team that has mm. been performing consistently well here locally at the continental level and has been uh, featuring in uh, world events uh, again consistently over the last 10, 15 years. And even the league, I, I follow your league. Yes. Uh, um, it's well organized. Um, Thank you. Um, I'm not sure about the packaging because uh, that's one thing I touched on with Bitok last week. Because you're saying apart from Kasarani and how many indoor gyms do you have in this country? Because <laughs> across the country, infrastructure mm -hmm. is an issue. And a lot of corporates will tell you, fine, you have games, but it's not well packaged. Uh, thank you, Caro. You are asking a question, I think, uh, whose answer you have. In Kenya, we have <laughs> in Kenya, we have it's only. It's not my job. <laughs> I wish it was. <laughs> in Kenya, we have only one indoor arena that meets international standards, mm. and that is Kasarani. And I think we previously discussed about accessibility to Kasarani. I, the other indoor arenas we have, and we have used them previously, there is one in Mombasa that belongs to KPA. It has certain limitations because for volleyball. You need a certain clearance from the floor to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And uh, apart from Kasarani, mm. we do not have any other international uh, ar uh, arena with international standards. And I can tell you, uh, very recently we wanted to bid to host uh, club championships here in Nairobi. But uh, I was told the teams that had co confirmed participation were in excess of 20, in which case you need two arenas. 
In Kenya, you have only one. Only so have one. Yeah, so you had to withdraw our bid because uh, if you win and you need two arenas, then you have a challenge. And 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 what uh, are you meeting government officials? Or are you meeting corporate partners to try and get this changed? Because uh, I'm not sure the kind of change you're talking about in terms of facilities can be provided with corporate partners. Mm. This again is a responsibility that must be undertaken by the government. Both, Even because and I discussed this a couple of weeks ago. I think I was hosting the basketballers. Yes. You're telling me that uh, an indoor arena doesn't really have to cost a lot of money. That's indeed uh, true. Uh, not all arenas need to be like the one we have in Kasarani. Mm -hmm. That is uh, a premium kind of facility. But indoor arenas, and many clubs outside Kenya have their own uh, arenas, simple. Uh, the basketball court, which is an indoor arena at uh, Nyar Stadium, is not a very complicated hall. So it's possible to have inexpensive but uh, usable uh, indoor arenas of international standard without being without having them too expensive. Yes. Okay, because I'm, I'm, I'm sure some of these corporates, as much as our corporates won't want to construct the actual um, complex, they may want to come and brand it. So it also needs to look like something they can brand. And as long as we have uh, clubs and tournaments being played in, in, in outdoors, as you're saying, in most of the areas, it's a bit tricky for some corporates because they, they, they visualize what their sponsorship or partnership will look like. So, I mean, uh, I wish they would step forward, at least, and sponsor the national team. I see you've got, um, and I'm asking you now to put on your hat as chef de mission, I see you've got some partnership uh, with, uh, I think, ch uh, uh, sweepstakes? Kenya Charity Sweepstakes. Kenya Charity Sweepstakes. Yes. This is for, and it's not just for volleyball, it's for the no, no, this is, this is uh, for the Olympic team. This is a partnership between the Kenya Charity Sweepstakes and the National Olympic Committee of Kenya. Okay. We are hoping that uh, through this partnership, the Kenya Charity Sweepstakes can raise some funds mm -hmm. to assist the National Olympics of Kenya, support our teams that are still in the process of qualifying for the Olympics and the preparations of those who are already qualified. So it's dependent, there's no figure on it. It's dependent on how much, how people play the Charity Sweepstakes between now and, uh, and September and uh, August. Yes. Yes, we have certain targets uh, which we hope can be achieved mm -hmm. and uh, that's information shared with um, this particular partner. And uh, I think so far they have, they have uh, given the NOC about 10 million, it's not too bad and uh, we are looking forward for more money coming. But let me say this and uh, th it's important that the Kenyans understand that uh, the Ministry of Sports has been exceptionally good, exceptionally <laughs> supportive <laughs> of uh, our preparation for the Olympics and kudos to CS uh, Honorable Amina Mohammed and the PS uh, <laughs> Joe Kudo. Uh, all the teams who require to travel mm -hmm. outside the country for qualification are being provided with that support without a lot of fuss. This is something we have not seen before I, I will I will echo and applaud yes. them on that front, yeah, yes. but but yes. and I know you have to play your politics and be politically this correct. This, this is not politics. I don't <laughs> have to. My issue with that, yes. well and good, thank you. You're yes. giving us support for yes. exactly six months yes. uh, or less. Yes. Preparing for an Olympic is not a six-month affair. It I is I a six-year affair. It I is I a ten-year affair. It I means I constant I development of sport in your country. I not. I, 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 I agree. Yes. But for me, this is an indication of a change in terms of approach by the ministry. I and hope they'll sustain it. I hope it will be sustained. Mm -hmm. We already know that uh, the next Olympics will be in uh, France in 2024. Mm -hmm. And uh, we at the National Olympic Committee are preparing a program which we, we need to share with the ministry, mm -hmm. indicating the areas where the ministry needs to support in terms of preparing for the 2024 Olympics. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, and this is not politics, mm -hmm. Uh, the current CS for sports has been very supportive, mm -hmm. uh, very, very supportive. Uh, in fact, we had a retreat in Ivasha where she attended personally and where she assured us that the government is behind you. <laughs> no, no, Carol, <laughs> Carol. 
Claro. I'm listening. You, you, I'm listening. You, 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 know, know, you, you seem to be a bit uh, 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 doubtful. Or I am yes. doubtful because yes. m I'm concerned about the development of sport. Yes. The men and women who are being supported this year, it's the Mercy Moims, it's the Collins and Geras, yes. it's the David Rudishas. Yes. But where did Rudisha start? Where did Moim start? Has she been supported for the last 15 years to prepare her for now? Has Collins and Jera been supported for the last 15 years to, to prepare him from now? Because yeah, right yeah. now where the support is needed, and probably it's not even the government, it's the federations, where the support yeah, yeah. is needed is on eight-year-olds now. I agree with you, uh, Caro, mm. but uh, you seem to want to dwell very much on history. I would like you Not to on be history, uh, on uh, preparation. I, I, yes, I'd like you to be a little bit uh, uh, forward looking, optimistic, optimistic <laughs> and forward looking. <laughs> uh, optimistic and forward looking. Uh -huh. uh, they, they may have been, uh, which indeed is true, mm. uh, we have had uh, uh, ministers for sports who didn't really want to provide any support. I don't want to mm -hmm. name names, mm -hmm. but we have had frustrations quite a bit in mm -hmm. that ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, some of us even gave up uh, going to that ministry because you'd be given an appointment, come and see so and so at 10 o'clock. So and you are, kept, you are kept waiting from 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock, you don't see anybody. So mm -hmm. that frustration grew up and some of us abandoned going to that ministry. But the game plan has changed completely. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to say this, you may I want to laugh it off again, but uh, we have we have a CS who is very supportive, and this is a fact. We are experiencing it, and I believe that uh, when the federations and the National Olympic Committee prepare their program for the next four years, 2024, assuming Madam CS will still be there, That's I think we shall be able to get uh, that support. But then government. CS has changed. These are political positions, so you um, don't know who comes next. Unfortunately, my, my issue, and mm. I think I've mentioned it on a past show, mm. I actually, I think our current CS does the best she can. Yes. But our government, or maybe our country as a whole, does not see sport as the industry it can be. That so it's not given the attention or the resources that, that it needs. That is true, but uh, we also understand, and I'm sure you're also familiar with the current situation in the country. The country appears to be quite strained in terms of resources. Uh, this is, uh, <coughs> well, I don't know why you are reacting that way. I'm reacting that way because we are about to, first of all, bloat our cabinet and find money to pay them. Uh, Every time uh, they uh, want an increment, uh, they find the money. So uh, as much uh, uh, as we uh, have challenges as a country and COVID has actually made things worse, when it is selfish needs, we find the money. And well, what I, frustrates I, I, me, and, and probably just so that you can answer this as a whole, what frustrates me is the potential the sport industry that works has. I agree with you. Mm. The sports, if properly supported, could have a huge impact, positive impact mm -hmm. in this country, and more particularly among our youth. Currently, we have uh, uh, thousands, if not millions, of youth who are wasting uh, because of lack of gainful engagement, gainful employment. So they have resorted to alcoholism back there. And it's a pity. Uh, I believe the government and also the county governments should develop a policy where they support uh, these youth. Because today, uh, education is becoming increasingly meaningless because your parents will invest in educating you. Mm -hmm. They will probably sell their cattle to pay your fees or sell a piece of land to pay your fees, then you go up to Form 4, or even at the university, you graduate, you have your no papers, jobs. but out there you have no jobs. Mm. And then uh, thereafter, out of frustration, you drift. Drugs, drugs alcohol, alcoholism. Crime. And this is, this is a major challenge in the country. So it's something which uh, the government needs to think about very seriously because we are wasting a lot of our youths. We're wasting a lot of our youth who could be employed in a working sport industry. Yes, because absolutely. Because not just as sports people. When we look uh, abroad, they have lawyers and doctors and masseurs and no, security no, and drivers no, Cara, and some so many. Some time back, we helped a number of volleyballers mm. uh, to gain uh, volleyball scholarships in the US. Mm -hmm. Top players, uh, like in, uh, Helen Elele, mm -hmm. Uh, Rosina Obunaga. In fact, Obunaga is now a coach in one of the colleges at the university. 
-hmm. So given those opportunities, and uh, I believe with more involvement of our government and our missions abroad, we could send more and more youth and they will get better opportunities. But as things stand now, most of the youth cannot see the future, unfortunately. There's, there's, there's nothing to look forward to. Yes. As chef de mission, we're going for Tokyo 2020. We didn't do too well at the last Olympics. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Kenya has, uh, we were criticized, mm -hmm. well, not really criticized. There were management issues in how the, 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 the Olympic team was managed. There were issues in terms of uh, do our athletes perform, they seem to perform better in Diamond League than the Olympics because the money's in the Diamond League and things like that, yeah? How we prepared uh, differently? Carol, in terms, just a small correction, in terms of performance mm -hmm. by our athletes, mm -hmm. the Rio Olympics, our athletes performed very well. Mm -hmm. Very well, probably the best performance, Rio. The problem in Rio was in the management. Mm -hmm. of the event. The athletes performed very well despite uh, many challenges, but those responsible for uh, preparing the team, the logistics and what have you, got involved with the things that uh, were scandalous. Mm -hmm. So for the athletes, their performance was good. Mm. It's a management team that created but a problem. But their performance was bad. Yes, bad, really indeed, and shameful. And, so and, and you, in fact, you brought me a Team yeah, Kenya jersey. I yeah, hope there's yeah, no scandal yes. around this. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you, Caro, I assured the CS for Sports, uh -huh. Madam Amina, I assured my colleagues at the NOC, I have assured the Kenyans that we want to deliver a, a Tokyo 2020 Olympics free of any scandals. Mm -hmm. And I've said, it, I've said it before, I have, I have a name and reputation built over years. Absolutely. Uh, uh, right? I don't want to destroy all that in by two minutes. Uh, two minutes. No, 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 no. Mm. And if I see a situation, and my colleagues in NOC know this, mm. if I see a situation that is not fairly straight, I will say no to it. But if people insist on following that route, I would rather step down. Because mm. yes, you're known position. for no nonsense. Yes, I know uh, you're known for no nonsense. Per personally, I, I will not accept a route that might uh, create uh, problems for the Tokyo 2020. So we can assure the athletes and Kenyans, the fans, that things will be absolutely straight. Absolutely, absolutely. Your term, you've been in office for 20 plus odd years. Yes. Your term comes to an end next year. Yes, I'm be looking forward. Because in, I think 2014 yeah. is when you yeah. change the constitution yes. to limit two terms. Yes. What are your plans after that? Well, fortunately, Caro, when, let me first of all say that I'm looking forward to stepping down mm -hmm. next year. Uh, I want to express my deep gratitude to the entire volleyball fraternity in this country for the support they have given me all the years. Uh, managing sports federations in this country is not always very easy. It's not easy. It's not easy, but uh, uh, God has given me the grace to be uh, humble and uh, to have tolerance levels that I can accommodate my colleagues who we don't necessarily agree on most things. For me, it has been a good ride, and um, I'm grateful. I look forward, uh, quite frankly, to uh, stepping down next year. But uh, even as I step down next year, I am recently elected as the vice president and the treasurer of the African Volleyball Confederation. Ah. Very mm -hmm. good. And uh, it, it will keep me busy. I'm also a member of the FIVB International Volleyball Federation Sports Events Council. So there are many activities that... Uh, so you will we'll still support Kenya? I will still support the growth of Kenya? Certainly, certainly. Kenya becomes first priority, whether I'm in the executive or not. Mm -hmm. Any support that I can lend to the Kenyan Vodwa Federation, I will be gladly, I would gladly do so. Um, as we come to wind up, just, uh, of course, COVID has been a challenge for everybody. How have you managed for the last one year in terms of managing the, well, the, the teams and the... COVID is a challenge, mm. a living challenge. And uh, particularly the third wave is very worrisome. And we have many challenges in this country and uh, COVID has yet compounded these challenges. Recently we had the rugby teams uh, fly to Madrid in Spain for a competition in preparation of the Olympics organized by the International Federation. And they tell you the experience of the kind of bubble camps mm -hmm. they had in uh, Madrid. 
It's mm. not possible to rep replicate them here. We don't have the money. <laughs> not just the money, even the culture and the facilities. Mm -hmm. In Madrid, these teams would be put in a hotel mm -hmm. where everybody is tested regularly, mm -hmm. including the employees of that hotel. Mm -hmm. They also reside in that hotel. There's no interaction with the uh, outside world. Mm -hmm. Here in Kenya, we are trying to replicate the bubble at Kasarani. It's not possible because Kasarani is open, blah, 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 blah. So it calls upon each one of us to be disciplined mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to be careful and to adhere to these uh, countermeasures for protocols. But we have a culture in Kenya of, uh, yeah, it's not there. Corona is not there. Corona is not there. We're a bit we casual. We are, we are a bit, ca not a bit, very, very casual, very casual. But it's also what we're able to do because like in sport, and I know they've tried it, like in the Kenyan Premier League, they got players tested at the beginning of the season. Um, I understand they couldn't, the rest of the money they had to use it to pay off uh, Adela Mrush. So I don't know if the players have been tested again. And yet these are contact sports of people who then have to go home at the end of the day, interact with other people who've also gone off to their biasharas or hustles. Mm -hmm. And it's a tricky affair in Kenya and in Africa. It is absolutely challenging, absolutely challenging. Uh, I can tell you, for now, we have got um, uh, AK sprinters mm -hmm. in the camp in Kasaran. Mm -hmm. They have been tested twice. They have been, I think, for a week or two. Rugby men moved in uh, the other day. Taekwondo team is there. Mm -hmm. Rugby ladies mm -hmm. will be moving in maybe this mm -hmm. weekend. Mm -hmm. And the cost of testing mm -hmm. is fairly high. Yeah. Fortunately, we had uh, uh, some support from the Minister of Health courtesy of the CS um, Tahi Kagwe. Mm -hmm. And uh, our first batch was tested by the Ministry of Health without uh, any cost. But with the surge of the third wave, the ministry is diverting its attention to other probably more pressing areas. So yeah, we have to go- it's tricky because yes. the need is countrywide. Absolutely. So now we are making arrangements with alternative facilities where we have to pay. And this is not just a uh, one test. You mm. test as you get into the hostel, then you are tested maybe three days, four days later. It's expensive. And uh, we have to continue doing it despite all these challenges because you have no wow. alternative. Wow. Mm. But we're preparing for the Olympics and the Olympics will go on. The Olympics, there's been word that fans and visitors to Japa Japan may be limited um, depending on how the wave goes. Let, let me tell you, Karo, mm. Mm. the general population of Japan mm are not very keen on having this Olympics proceed because of the COVID. They have this mm -hmm. feeling that the uh, more people you bring for these Olympics, uh, there might be a spike. And it's a genuine so concern. It's a genuine concern. But then the IOC, the government of Japan, and the Metropolitan uh, Government of Tokyo are keen because there's been a lot of investment yeah. in the preparation of this. So they are keen to have this event going. And it's been delayed by a year. Precisely. Already. So the organizers have uh, released what they're calling the Olympi Olympics playbook. is a book showing the countermeasures, COVID countermeasures, mm. which must be observed strictly by anybody planning to go for the Olympics. This uh, countermeasures, that booklet has been shared with all the teams, with all the team's uh, support crew with the ministry so that people read and understand. In Japan, they will be testing after either the three, four days if you're in Japan. You will not be able to use public means in Japan. You may not be able to go for shopping. After your event is over, within two days, you must vacate and go back to the country. You cannot, arri you cannot arrive five days before your event starts. And mm -hmm. upon arrival, you are test tested. Three days later, you are tested. They have also developed uh, a smartphone app called Coco, which all people going to Japan for the Olympics must download. Mm -hmm. And with that app, uh, you'll be able to, to provide the required information to the organizer at the other end. And I believe they'll also probably be able to monitor to monitor you. Wow, yes. this thing has changed our lives. Yes, absolutely. This thing has changed our lives. Absolutely. All right, well, uh, well Dr. Kioni, unless, you, uh, Kioni, unless you have any parting shot, where would you like to see volleyball in the next, like, five years? I mean, you, you, you yeah, won't be president anymore, but as you yes. say, you'll have roles supporting volleyball. Thank you, Carol. Uh, my biggest uh, disappointment over the years is that we have not been able to lift the men's uh, national team mm -hmm. to the level of the ladies' national team. And I'm hoping that uh, going forward, uh, the government will see the need to support uh, 
the national teams because given the support, our national team men uh, can perform like any other team in Africa or even better. But we need that support from the government, uh, provide uh, financial support and also free and ready access to the indoor training facilities. That is really what I would like to see. And for Marikia strikers, I hope after this uh, experience with the FIVB support for the Olympics, they will break the ceiling and uh, go beyond. I love those girls. Yes, I thank love you. their hard work, their resilience, thank you. their talent. Thank you. And, and, I, and I wish them the best. I mean, I, I would also just throw in, I wish corporate Kenya steps forward so thank that you. these these the people who play volleyball can be paid as professionals. Because in Kenya, thank they you. do two I jobs. Th I think that's something else I should have mentioned. I think mm. apart from the football coach, mm. who is paid by the government, yeah. all the other coaches in the federations are volunteers. They don't get any... They don't mm -hmm. get a paycheck. No, they don't. Actually, Bitok told me something very worrying, that he doesn't have a contract. <laughs> that is true. And uh, what? That is true. Bitok is uh, basically a technical director for team KCB. Mm -hmm. Yes. But uh, when it comes to the national team, he's a volunteer, like in most other federations. What? Yes. You're a volunteer, and we've put pressure on you to go and perform mm -hmm. at the Olympics. Um, um, so that's patriotism. Thank you. That's patriotism, <laughs> patriotism, but patriotism yeah, never yeah, paid bills. Did. So <laughs> <laughs> at some point, it would be good to see these yes. people paid as Absolutely. That, 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 that the kind of the development or evolution we like to see going forward. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you for finally coming to Radu thank Live. You. Um, uh, we'll continue to have conversations as we always do. Thank We're you. on the same WhatsApp group for the last, I think, two years Thank you. for Kenya Volleyball. Yeah. But also go back and tell your people to get on social media. Yes. Because I get volleyball fixtures on our WhatsApp group. Kenyans at large who want to go and watch Pipeline or KCB or whoever play over the weekend don't even know where to get the information. I'll, I'll, I'll link you up with the chairman of our media commission. And that's the person that I need to yes, speak to. Yes, and yes, yes. Uh, get organized. Yes, that <laughs> you should be able to break that uh, that wall. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Thanks thank for coming. So and uh, thanks as always to you guys for watching Radul Live every Saturday, 1 to 2 p.m. Um, next week, I'm hoping to uh, host Odua Gangla and have a similar conversation about thank rugby. You. Yes. Um, thank we you. had one about football with Nick Mwendwa in December. Yes. Um, and I see Harambe Stars are having their friendlies. I'm happy about that. Thank you. But I'd really like to see sport get to a point where it is a job. It rewards the players on a constant basis. Thank you, Carlo, um, for your passion in, in seeing sports develop in this country. And I also note that you have a big following, and congratulations. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. We thank try. You. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so All much. All right. Well, guys, we'll see you next week on Radu Live. Thanks for watching. Thank you. To all aspiring footballers on the African continent, your ultimate assist is your mindset. Keep getting things done. Wow.